Alright, and what's going on guys? TBL here, back with a little bit of some late night goodness for you. Playing a little bit more of that Call of Duty Infinite Warfare, making a quick video to talk to you guys about some of the latest gaming news that's hit over this last week. It's been a really, really busy week for me in terms of gaming and just content creation with the streams we've been having and all the guide videos and review videos and stuff we've been making to uh, cover all the new weapons and stuff in Destiny. I haven't really had time to make a lot of news videos, but uh, there's definitely some stuff we need to talk about, and I'm not even going to put any pretense to it. The Xbox One Scorpio, Project Scorpio, finally has been unveiled. We've got confirmed specs, and we're going to be talking about that for just a little bit in today's video. But first things first, we are playing some more Infinite Warfare. We have a special weekend event going on in this game. They brought back Hyper Team Deathmatch, and for those who don't play Infinite Warfare, I know there's quite a lot of you out there, you've already disliked the video. Hyper Team Deathmatch is kind of like a mayhem mode. For, uh, for Infinite Warfare. If you remember, Mayhem from Destiny is a mode where all of your cooldowns are like greatly reduced. It's the same thing for Hyper TDM. As I recall, your special rig ability cooldown charge is seven times faster, so based on the rig that you pick, you're probably going to be popping a lot of specials. It's crazy, it's hectic, and it's a lot of fun. It's kind of like just one of those game modes you go into to blow off a little bit of steam and just everybody's super overpowered. Also, probably unsurprisingly, it's a great mode for uh, kind of farming mission teams. You get a lot of kills, games are done really quickly, and it's really easy to complete some of the challenges like build up this much score or kill this many people. So if you're trying to farm up that old Blood Anvil mission team, it's a great weekend to do that. Although I'm still waiting for them to bring back a double mission team EXP. I missed out on that a couple of weeks ago, and I am kicking myself for it. I could have had Blood Anvil leveled up in just two to three days. Ah, oh well, just have to do it the old-fashioned way. But that's not why we're here today. We're here to talk Xbox One Project Scorpio. The specs have been officially unveiled, and I've got to say, they're actually looking pretty darn good. While, of course, you know, PC Master Race, it's definitely not going to be uh, unseating the biggest, baddest PCs out there, but this thing is going to basically provide some upper mid-end performance, which is a lot more impressive than I was initially expecting from Microsoft and their newest Xbox. They've definitely pulled out all the stops. So this week, we got some official word from Digital Foundry, which got the scoop on Project Scorpio's confirmed specs. They were later confirmed by Microsoft, and they are certainly something to behold. Now, let's go quickly through some of these specs. For the CPU, it's going to have eight custom x86 cores clocked at 2.3 gigahertz. That's pretty darn good, since uh, comparatively speaking, the PS4 Pro has eight Jaguar cores, just like the previous consoles, clocked at 2.1 gigahertz. The GPU is going to have 40 customized compute units clocked at 1172 megahertz. That's actually pretty darn impressive, especially when you compare it to the Xbox One's GPU, which is generally clocked at about 853 megahertz for its core speed, and uh, even the PS4 Pro only hits about 911 megahertz. So this thing is coming with significantly more bandwidth than you would expect. And memory-wise, this GPU is no slouch, coming with 12 gigs of GDDR5 core memory. Now, that's uh, that, that's very tantalizing right there. That's like GTX 1080 uh, Ti and Titan X levels of uh, memory, but there's a little bit of an asterisk next to that. Games are only going to have access to 8 gigs of memory. The other four is going to be for the operating system. In total, it's going to have about 326 gigabytes per second of memory bandwidth. That's actually really high compared to the old Xbox One, which had about 204 gigabytes per second. The Xbox One S maxed out at 219 gigabytes per second, and the PS4 Pro only hits about 218 gigabytes per second. So it's not lacking on the power and the memory bandwidth there, which is good because this thing is making the claim that it's going to be able to run native 4K gaming. And uh, based on the specs that we got here, you know, I believe they might be able to pull it off. And uh, although there's no real indication of whether or not it's going to be that kind of checkerboard layered rendering that kind of changes the shapes of the pixels to create a sharper, more complete image, it's basically upscaling on the PS4 Pro. Project Scorpio is claiming that it's going to be able to produce true native 4K images, and I'm definitely very excited to see that. In some of the uh, behind-the-scenes testing, there was reports that they've already ported the new Forza game over to the Xbox One Project Scorpio variant, whatever they're going to wind up calling it, and that it's already running at 4K 60fps, which is very, very promising. Now, again, PC Master Race, of course, says, hey, oh, that's cute. 
Welcome to the party that we started, you know, last year, Microsoft, but this is still a pretty darn good step forward uh, for the console game and getting some of those games, some of those new next gen console games out at 4K. Oh man, it just makes me wonder if uh, stuff like Destiny 2 is going to be able to hit 4K on this console, and if so, I might have to swap over from PS4 over to my over to my little my little Xbox, my little Project Scorpio. Now, of course, there's no words about what games are going to be launching with Project Scorpio, but we do know it's basically going to be very much like the PS4 Pro in that it's going to have access to all the P the Xbox One games that are available right now, and that much like the PS4 Pro, they're going to be offering sort of an upgraded mode for games that you play on Project Scorpio. So you can up-res those games to 4K and they'll have some sort of boosted mode for that. And we also know that apparently it's not that difficult to port these games since apparently it only took two days for them to port Forza over to this thing and get it running at 4K 60 FPS, which is very exciting news. And unlike Sony, Microsoft will be continuing the tradition of allowing you uh, at least a limited form of backwards compatibility, not just with normal Xbox One games, but also 300 plus Xbox 360 games that are currently backwards compatible, with more coming in the future. So yeah, all that plus a 1TB 2.5 inch hard drive and a 4K UHD Blu-ray disc makes up Project Scorpio. And again, I've got to say, it doesn't look too bad, doesn't look too bad at all. It's not like a top tier PC or anything, but again, it's like that upper level of mid PC performance, which is a lot more than I was initially expecting from Project Scorpio. You know, I, I speculated it'd be some sort of iterative console that you'd be able to swap parts out of, like maybe buy a specific graphics card and shove it in there so you can make it as strong as you want. And while, you know, that was kind of the pipe dream, this is still very, very good. It looks like Microsoft decided that they had two options here. They can make a slightly better iterative release with, uh, you know, some real tangible benefits like the PlayStation 4 Pro has over the PlayStation 4, but, you know, nothing too crazy. Or they can go balls to the wall and make the strongest console feasibly possible for them. And I think they went with that uh, that second option there. This thing is definitely going to pack a punch, and it's going to have a pretty big effect on the market. Very interested in seeing what Sony's response to it's going to be. And uh, like I said, there's two big things that we need to learn here. One, what the price margin for this thing is. And uh, two, what it's going to mean for the exclusive game market. Like I said to uh, to some boys that I was talking to before this, if this thing can come out at a competitive price margin, it's speculated to be at least $499, maybe within that $499 to $599 price range, and if it can land some really serious, good, exclusive games, this thing could be a game changer. And personally, I can't wait to see where it's going to lead. But alright guys, it's pretty much going to be it. What do you all think of the Project Scorpio Xbox One specs? Do you think they're pretty good? Do you think they're good enough to uh, topple Sony? Either way, we'll be learning more about this thing later this year, and I cannot wait. But alright, that's it for this one guys, thanks so much for watching, and as always, I am the Black Link. You guys, stay frosty.